All right, good morning, Comanche Nation. Welcome to the November CBC meeting. I'm gonna call this meeting to order at 10.01. At this time, Secretary Treasurer, will you please do roll call? Mark Wimbledon, Chairman. Here. Dr. Cornell P. Wee Wardy, Vice Chairman. Here. Hazel Tassaqua, Committee Woman Number One. Ross Carrara, Committeeman Number Two. Here. Alice Castavoid, Committee Woman Number Three. Here. Robert Comachi, Jr., Committeeman Number Four. Here. You have a quorum, Chairman. Okay, Secretary Treasurer, will you please lead us in the invocation? Uh, let us let us give thanks at this time to our Heavenly Father, Hans Amek of God, our Lord Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, as we are here before you, our humble people, our Comanche people, we always say everything is a blessing that you provide to us, Heavenly Father. We want to thank you for the things that you've done for this nation. Our people are in need. We appreciate the help that you have given. We're very thankful for the things that are happening for our people across the nation, Heavenly Father. As we go through this day, we ask that the things will be good and that the things that we do will be pleasing unto you, Father. We are your servants. Forgive us of all our sins, Heavenly Father. I ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 All right, CBC, will you please look over the October minutes? I'd like to make a motion to approve the October meeting minutes. We got a motion to approve. Could I get a second? Second by our vice chairman. Could I, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? All right, minutes have been passed. Okay, before we go into our resolutions, we have our executive reports. Uh, for the last two months, as your chairman, I've attended all required meetings, events, and represented our people at the state and national level. Vice Chairman. Good morning. Besides attending all the monthly meetings of the, um, uh, of my, my role, I want to share the following highlights month of October because we hadn't had an opportunity to even to, to do this. So I, I appreciate that. I just want to give a shout out to uh, the fair board the, uh, for coordinating such a successful fair this year. Coming out of the COVID-19, you're, you're helping to heal our people, and it's really important that we are able to get together and, and do the things we always done. So I just want to give a shout out for all the committee and all the, the workers, and fantastic, fantastic uh, uh, fair. Also, shout out to, to Bonnie Lemon. Bonnie was um, named the Indigenous Woman Community Spirit Award um, by the Indigenous Peoples Committee because of her work of nationhood and being kind and loving care to people in the city of Lawton in southwest Oklahoma. And her too, appreciation to Comanche Nation Prevention and Recovery for the major contributions to the fifth annual Indigenous Peoples Day celebration. I'd also like to give a shout out to Cindy Fumero for being named the 2022 Parent of the Year by the Oklahoma Council for Indian Education advocacy for Indian children is reflected in the statewide award in which she received she will receive in the conference in annual next month in Choc at Choctaw Casino in Durant, Oklahoma. This past summer I want to thank uh, Mr. Jerry Parker, Comanche citizen, for bringing to my attention that one of his relatives, a young Comanche student in a Calinim uh, independent school district in, in Corpus Christi, Texas. He was told to cut his hair by the public school officials because of their school policy. Um, I reached out on behalf of their family and advocated for their students' cultural and their religious rights, corresponding for months with the school superintendent over the summer. We were successful in changing their hair policy, thereby allowing their child and all native children to wear their hair long at the public school district in, in the state of uh, Texas. 
So thank you, Mr. Jerry Parker, for reaching out to me to help change public policy schools that honors our Comanche culture and our language. On that note of cultural advocacy, I want, to, I want the Comanche Nation to know that I don't apologize for any Comanche culture and language. Like 10 bears before me and all the strong leaders of the Comanche Nation, I advocate for social justice and self-determination by using my academic scholarship as my arsenal that exposes institutional dynamics that drive structural racism in this, in this country. So I'm not an apologist, and I don't want anybody apologizing for my scholarship and my practice. I'm proud to be Namana and Comanche, and I'm proud to be Indigenous. Ura, thank you. Secretary Treasurer. Okay, at this time, they're going to put my report up on the screen. <clears throat> as Secretary of Treasurer, I have performed the duties cited within the Comanche Nation Constitution, Article 12, duties of the officers. Section 3, Secretary of Treasurer shall keep records, including financial, which is supported by Finley and Cook, CPA firm, and the tribal administrator have ensured that the records and the keeping of the minutes of the tribal council and legal quorum business committee meetings is, is accomplished, and that's being done by a Dodson uh, court reporting company. The responsibility for sending all notices of legal meetings ensure that tribal employees keep copies of all such notices and requests for meetings ensure that such notices are mailed and published. Section 4 ensured that copies of all minutes of all the tribal council and legal quorum business committee meetings and resolutions are sent to the Anadarko Agency. Secretary Treasurer Oversight, monitoring of tribal government and tribal entities compliance to meeting requirements of annual audits. Number one, tribal government programs, Julia Mansky, tribal administrator. Years 20, 21 have been completed with no financial findings in the process of completing 2022. Tax Commission, Harley Pennington, tax administrator. Years 2018-19 completed, no financial findings. In the process of completing 2021-22, I required the tax, admi uh, tax admi commission to order audits that were not ordered for years 2018 and 20 by the prior administration. Number three, the Comanche Nation Enterprise under George Tadanapa, acting director, years 2017, 2018, 2019 are completed, no financial findings. In the process of completing 20, 21 and 22. Comanche Nation Housing Authority under Russell Sossaman, director, completed 21 audit, covering all programs at the Housing Authority, no financial findings. Now I'll go into the American Rescue Plan report. The, uh, the, the, the whole ARP budget is as, as follows. General assistance, we spent 35.3%, 36,457,843.18. Food assistance, 4.26%, 4,399,728.38. School assistance, 0.54%, 557,500.38. Seven hundred and twelve and five cents. Home repairs thirty three percent, thirty four million. Rental assistance eight point seven percent, nine million. Total eighty eighty one point thirty three percent of of the eighty four million. Approximately eighty two percent of the budget went directly to the Comanche people. Thus far, with a balance around seventeen million. I, of course, this report I've signed off as being official. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Secretary Treasurer. Okay, moving into our first resolution, Education Resolution 149-2022. Ms. Castanvoid, will you please read that resolution? Yes, list number 1260. 
uh, starting at the second whereas the list includes the names of applicants who have been verified as eligible pursuant to Article 3, Section 1C, membership of the Constitution of the Comanche Nation, which states all descendants of allottees eligible for membership under the provision of Section 1A of the article having one eighth or more degree of Comanche Indian blood. And now, therefore, be it resolved that the Comanche Business Committee accept the verification of eligibility for the applicants as shown on list 1260 by the Comanche Nation Enrollment Office. And be it further resolved that the Comanche Nation Enrollment Office notify the eligible applicant by letter of their approved membership and further that the enrolled member be provided information concerning their enrollment, including name, date of birth, roll number, social security number, and degree of Indian blood. Those being added today, Clifford Adams Jr., Taylor Andino, Hilda Andonian, Layla Batiste, Ava Batiste, Lake and Breeze, Cody Broadhurst, Rhett Cable, Ruthie Cable, Sage Dixon, Alexander Flores Jr., Kelsey Geis, Julius Geisman, Lena Howe, Lodi Isbister, Alana Johnson, Leona Johnson, Donna Johnson, Caden Copatty, Royalty Copatty, Chatham, Brooklyn Leach, Deacon Leach, Logan Leach, William Malone, Jack C. Mann, Anaya Manson, Charlie Mycoby, Ezekiel Roberson, Wilbert Roberson III, Augustus Trentham, and Kyle Valentine. Okay, thank you. I need a motion to pass resolution 149-2022. I make motion. Motion I made by secretary treasurer, seconded by CBC member number three. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, resolution passes. Our next resolution, enrollment resolution 150-2022. Ms. Castavoid, will you please read that resolution? Yes, starting at the third whereas, the list of applicants are considered adults but have not been enrolled in any other tribe and the documentary evidence on file with the enrollment office and now therefore be it resolved that the Comanche Business Committee accept the verification of eligibility for the applicants as shown on list number 1261 by the Comanche Nation Enrollment Office and be it further resolved that the Comanche Nation Enrollment Office notify the eligible applicant by letter of their approved membership and further that the enrolled member be provided information concerning their enrollment including name, date of birth, roll number, social security number, and degree of Comanche blood. Name being added, Jessica Lopez. Okay, thank you. I need a motion to pass resolution 1502-0, I'm sorry, dash 2022. I make the motion. Motion made by CBC member number three. Could I get a second? Second. Second it made by CBC member number four. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, resolution passes. Our next resolution, enrollment resolution 150-2022. Ms. Castavoid, will you please read that resolution? Uh, that is resolution number 151-2022, list number 1261, starting at the third or second whereas. The documentary evidence on file with the Comanche Nation Enrollment Office and information furnished by each applicant named on list number 1262 does not possess the required one eighth degree of Comanche blood as provided by Article 3, Section 1C of the Comanche Constitution. And now, therefore, be it resolved that each applicant named on the attached list number 1261 is determined to be ineligible for membership of the Comanche Nation of Oklahoma because they do not meet the provisions of Article 3 Section 3C of the Comanche Nation Constitution, and be it further resolved that each applicant on list number 1262 be officially notified of their rejection for membership, stating the reason for such determination and including the appropriate appeals provision. Okay, I need a motion to pass resolution 151 2022. I make the motion. Motion made by CBC member number three. I need a second. 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 Second made by our vice chairman. All in favor, <coughs> signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, resolution passes. Our next resolution, enrollment resolution 152-2022. Ms. Castavoid, will you please read that resolution? 
Yes, uh, starting at the second, whereas the documentary evidence on file with the Comanche Nation Enrollment Office and information furnished by each applicant named on list number 1263 do not descend from the Comanche Alati as provided by Article 3, Section 1B of the Comanche Constitution. And now, therefore, be it resolved that each applicant named on list number 1263 is determined to be ineligible for membership with the Comanche Nation because they do not meet the nation's constitutional membership requirements. And be it further resolved that each applicant on list number 1263 be officially notified of their rejection from membership, stating the reason for such determination and including the appropriate appeals provisions. Excellent. I need a <coughs> motion to pass resolution 152-2022. I make the motion. Motion made by CBC member number three. Could I get a second? Second. Second made by CBC member number four. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, resolution passes. Our next resolution, resolution 153-2022, enrollment resolution. Ms. Castaboyd, will you read that last resolution? Yes. Resolution 153-2022, list number 1264, starting at the second, whereas the documentary evidence on file with the Comanche Nation Enrollment Office verified that each applicant list on number 1264 considered ineligible pursuant to Article 3, Section 4 of the Constitution of the Comanche Nation, which states, notwithstanding the provisions of Section 3 of this article, any person who meets the eligibility criteria in Section 1 of this article who has a minor, who as a minor accepted a material or monetary benefit as a member of another tribe or whose legal guardians accepted a material or monetary benefit as a member of another Indian tribe where the person was a minor, Comanche Nation shall have the option of relinquishing their membership in the other tribe and becoming a member of the Comanche Nation not later than one year after they become an adult as defined by this constitution. And whereas the list presented contains applicants who have applied for membership with the Comanche Nation before or after the one year period as defined by the constitution of the Comanche Nation and are found ineligible for enrollment due to applying outside the parameters of Article 3, Section 4, and now, therefore, be it resolved that the Comanche Business Committee accept the verification of ineligibility for the applicants as shown on list number 1264 by the Comanche Nation Enrollment Office. And be it further resolved that the Comanche Nation Enrollment Office notify the ineligible applicants by letter of their denied membership and further that the applicant be provided information concerning their enrollment application. Thank you. I need a motion to pass resolution 153-2022. I make the motion. Motion made by CBC member number three. Can I get a second? Second. Second made by CBC member number four. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Resolution passes. Okay, moving on our next resolution. CIP resolution 154-2022. Mr. Carrara, will you please read that resolution? Yes. Resolution number 154-2022, starting at the fourth, whereas the Comanche Nation Food Distribution Building located at 584 Northwest Bingo Road, Lawton, Oklahoma, 73507, the TPO roof system will stop the leak in the roof and provide the roof with a more energy efficiency R rating, while the spray foam on the interior roof will provide an additional R rating and an extra moisture barrier. and whereas the Comanche Business Committee is authorized to approve Comanche Nation American Rescue Plan funding under current approved CN tribal government property and procurement policies and procedures for resolution number 022-16 and be it further resolved that the Comanche Business Committee approves uh, the Comanche Nation American Rescue Plan funding for the TPO roof system and interior spray foam coating and authorizes the bid approval submitted to the Capital Improvement Department by WW Builders Inc. in the amount of $145,230 that consists of a one-year contractor's warranty. Thank you. I need a motion to pass resolution 154-2022. I make the motion to approve. Motion to approve by CBC member number three. I need a second. Second. Second by our secretary treasurer. 
All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Resolution passes. Our next resolution, CIP Resolution 155-2022. Mr. Carrara, will you please read that resolution? Yes, resolution number 155-2022 at the 4th Juarez, the Comanche Nation Administration Building located at 584 Northwest Bengal Road, Lawton, Oklahoma, 73507. The new glass doors in the CN Administration Building will upgrade the interior of the building <coughs> and Whereas the Comanche Business Committee is authorized to approve Comanche Nation American Rescue Plan funding under current approved CN Tribal Government Property and Procurement Policies and Procedures by Resolution Number 022-16, and be it further resolved that the Comanche Business Committee approves Comanche Nation American Rescue Plan funding for the CN Administration glass door upgrades and authorizes the bid approval submitted to the Capital Improvement Department. Uh, Brady's Glass in the amount of $203,630 that consists of a one-year contractor's warranty. Thank you. I need call a motion for, to pass. Call for discussion. Okay, we have a call for discussion. Yes. Um, I'm kind of wondering why you would um, replace all the doors in administration if they, the plan is to remodel them prior to after the, the new building's being built. Okay, we've got our CIP director here. Louis, will you please answer the question? Thank you. Yes, we actually talked about remodeling the administration building mm -hmm. before the deal, and that is still ongoing. We haven't decided on a new complex yet. That's why the tribal administrator has instructed the CIP program to put new administration doors in there so we okay. can upgrade the interior to match the education center. Okay. And I've actually talked to several CDC, and I've talked with the company that turned their bid in. We will actually be able, if we decide to do the remodel two or three years, we will actually be able to take everything down and remove the doors in the new building if, when we, once we remodel. So we're not actually wasting any money at this time because we can reuse everything, all the hardware and the doors. Okay. Did I answer your question? Yes. Good question. All right, I need a motion to pass resolution 155-2022. I make the motion to approve. Motion to approve by CBC member number Second. three. Second it by CBC member number two. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, resolution passes. Next resolution, resolution 156-2022, CIP resolution. Mr. Carrara, will you please read that resolution? Yes, resolution number 156-2022 at, at the 4th, whereas the Comanche Nation buildings, CN Court, Watch Ticker Hall, CN Maintenance, and CN Fair, located at 584 Northwest Bingo Road, Lawton, Oklahoma, 73507. The new EIFS upgrades will upgrade the exterior appearance of the buildings and provide an, an additional moisture barrier and R value to the building and whereas the Comanche Business Committee is authorized to approve Comanche Nation American Rescue Plan funding under current approved CN tribal government property and procurement policies and procedures by resolution number 022-16 and be it further resolved that the Comanche Business Committee approves the Comanche Nation American Rescue Plan funding for the Comanche Nation buildings, CN Court, Watch Taker Hall, CN Maintenance and CN Fair EIFS up upgrades and authorizes the bid approval submitted to the Capital Improvement Department Laws Home Improvement in the amount of $190,118.20 that consists of a one-year contractor's warranty. Thank you. I need a motion to pass resolution 156-2022. Call for question. Yes. Question? Yes. Um, Louis, could you explain what this is? What this is? It's EFS, which is more like stucco. The exterior of the buildings were all these are metal buildings. The CN Fair building, the CIP building, the core building, and Washington Hall. The EFS will cover all the metal. So these buildings will have the same exterior building as the ones on D Street, the ones that we remodeled. So it's going to be like stucco. It's EFS. <coughs> it stands for Exterior Insulated Foam System. And it's going to have the two inches and everything around it's going to be looking nice. It actually gives the exterior an updated look, but it also provides an extra R value and insulation system. If you, look, if you look at a lot of the buildings around Lawton, 
They currently use EFIS. They have stone on the bottom or brick and then EFIS above it. Are there any plans, future plans, uh, regarding the Watchtaker Hall? We all know that it needs to be upgraded, but yes. we it keep putting Band-Aids on yeah. these old buildings. Correct. I mean, that, that is up to the committee. Okay. What is R value? Can you explain the, that to us? The R value, like in the walls, you have an R value of 19. You have an R value in your roofs of 38. But what does that stand it's, for? It's, it stands for the R value in the walls. Whenever you're heating and, and you're cool, come through. It's the insulation that provides the machine rock exterior. So you have that R value. It holds the heat and cool out. So like when, you, when you're building a, a house or a residential area, you can either have your R value of 13, 19, depending on how much you want to go. And those actually come in bats, R13 bats, R19 bats, or you can double them up and get an R38 value. And those, those are according to code that you have to do. Like you have, by, by code, you have to have an R19 in your sidewalls. Per code in the roofs, you have to have an R value of R38. Okay. And so that's, that's what you look at. And you can get them several ways. You can either do them by batting, you can do them by row batting in a middle building, or you can do it by the spray foam. The spray foam is a lot more expensive. And then you have, and then you have the EFIS as well. I can see the CN Court and maybe the maintenance buildings because those are the two newest buildings, but Watchtaker Hall, I think that, I hope to, have, to see in the future that we build a new building. Okay. I just wouldn't agree with the Watchtaker Hall, just the maintenance of the CN Court and the maintenance building because they are the newer buildings. And that's my opinion. Okay, thank how you. Much, how much of the 190000 is for Wash Day Girl? I have to break it down. I've got it broken down for square foot. I, I've got it broken down for square foot, so I have to go back and remeasure. It's approximately. So is this to bring it up to code, or is this purely it's cosmetic? It's just cosmetic. Okay. cosmetic. I don't know about spending 100, 111000 on cosmetics. Not on that particular building, because it's so old. We, if you like, we can actually table this and have them rebid and take Watch Taker Hall out for the next month. Can we vote on it without the Watch Taker Hall and then vote watch Taker Hall separately. You can make a motion make to a motion. amend this one and you remove Watch Taker Hall. Yeah, I'll yeah. make that motion to okay. amend it uh, okay. to exclude the Watch Taker Hall so we can discuss that further. Okay, we have a motion to amend resolution 156-2022. All in favor signify by saying aye. You got to get a second I'll first. I'll second. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll second. Second. Got second by vice chairman. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, resolution passes with amendments. Now we have to, well, we passed the amendment, so now we have to pass the new resolution. Okay, can we get a motion to pass the new resolution? I'll make a motion. Amend. Okay, we got a motion to pass the new resolution. Can we get a second? Second. Second made by CBC member number one. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, resolution passes. Next resolution, CIP resolution 157-2022. Mr. Carrara, will you please read that resolution? Yes, resolution number 157-2022. At the fourth, oh, let's see. At the third, whereas Comanche Nation sees the critical need to enact building, life safety, and fire codes for all buildings on tribal lands for the safety of the nation, its tribal members, tribal employees, and members of the public present on tribal lands. And whereas there are uniform codes that establish minimum codes affecting or relating to the built environment for the protection of life and property to be utilized for the purpose of assuring public health, safety, and welfare. And whereas it is the desire of the Comanche Business Committee to have standards within the Comanche Nation jurisdiction 
that assure public health, safety, and welfare, which are to be entirely within the purview of the authority of the Comanche Nation, and now, therefore, be it resolved that the Comanche Business Committee does hereby approve the adoption of the standards of the following building codes within the jurisdiction of the Comanche Nation, amending and updating building codes approved by resolution number 113-17, International Building Code 2018 Edition, IBC 2018. International Existing Building Code 2018 Edition, IEBC 2018. International Fire Code 2018 Edition, IFC 2018. International Fuel, Fuel Gas Code 2018 Edition, IFGC 2018. International Mechanical Code 2018 Edition, IMC 2018. International Plumbing Code, 2018 edition, IPC 2018. National Electric Code, 2020 edition, NEC 2020. Uh, this resolution specifically disclaims any intent to grant jurisdictions to the state of Oklahoma related to the adopted codes herein. And be it further resolved, the Comanche Business Committee acting for and on behalf of the Comanche Nation does hereby authorize this resolution for such intent effective immediately. Thank you. I need a motion to pass resolution 157-2022. I make the motion to approve. Motion made to approve by CBC member number three. Can I get a second? Second. Second made by CBC member number two. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Resolution passes. Our next resolution, diabetes resolution number 158-2022. Vice Chairman, will you please read that resolution? 158-2022. Yes. Grant application to the United States Department of Health and Human Services, Indian Health Service, Special Diabetes Program. One, two, three. Starting at the third, whereas the Convention Nation sees a critical need to provide diabetes treatment and or prevention activities and or services, also referred to as activities services for American Indian, Alaska Native communities. And whereas the United States Department of Health Human Services Special Diabetes Program for Indians has funds available from uh, 12,500 to a maximum of um, seven, what that, million five hundred for one year to accomplish this purpose. Whereas the tribal chairman or his designee is the official representative of the Comanche Nation and is authorized to negotiate and approve contracts and any amendment to such. And now therefore be it resolved that the Comanche Business Committee does hereby approve the submission of this grant application to the United States Department of Health and Human Services Special Diabetes Program for Indians. Be it further resolved that the Comanche Business Committee acting for and on behalf of the Comanche Nations does hereby authorize this resolution for such intent. Thank you. I need a motion to pass resolution 158-2022. Okay. Kevin, could you uh, give us an overall overview of um, this grant? Yes, it's the same grant we normally apply for every year. Uh, normally it's just a renewal. This will be the first time since 2016 that it's gonna be a competitive grant. So we can get anywhere from 12,000 up to 7.5 million. Uh, we normally get around 500,000 every year. So we've already applied. This is the grant right here. It's already been submitted. And normally we could just attach the letter from the chairman stating that the uh, business committee can oversee it. But this year they want everybody applying for it to be, have, to have the grant actually put into resolution. And so we won't have the actual details of it until we know the, the amount that we will receive. And we'll know that by the end of the year because this grant is for 2023. And then after that, it'll go into a competitive grant every year. And all the tribes across the country will be applying for the same amount. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Walkini. All right, I need a motion to pass resolution 158-2022. I make a motion. Mm -hmm. All right, we got a motion by CBC member number three. We got a second by CBC mm -hmm. member number one. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, resolution passes. Okay, our last resolution, resolution 159-2022. <laughs> 
Vice Chairman, will you please read that resolution? Start with the third rate, right, whereas resolution naming gaming ordinance. Whereas to promote the general welfare and improve the economic status of tribal members, the Comanche Business Committee desires to amend the Comanche, naming, na Comanche na Nation Gaming Ordinance, previously revised, codified, and amendment through December the 4th, 2021 to incorporate the changes in the red line Comanche Gaming Ordinance in Exhibit A attached thereto. And now therefore be it resolved that the Comanche Gaming Ordinance is hereby amended and restated in the form of Exhibit B attached hereto. And be it further resolved, the Chairman of the Comanche Business Committee shall ex submit Exhibit B the amended and restated gaming ordinance to the National Indian Gaming Commission, NIGC, for approval. Be it further resolved that the amended and restated Comanche gaming ordinance shall be in full force and effect immediately upon NIGC approval. Okay. I make the motion to approve. Okay, we got a motion to approve. Can Call I get a second? for discussion. All right, we got a discussion. Go ahead. Um, I would really like to see these um, not all lumped together and that we can vote on them separately. You're referring to the exhibits A and B? Mm -hmm. They are um, laid out in A and B. We did but have um, a discussion, but there was, it was brought up and I believe I was the only one asking questions and I, there was no, no real um, discussion. I didn't hear anyone's opinion about why they're um, making these changes, why it's good, nothing. These changes are from the recommendations that you kept bringing up and demanding corrections well, on did, and so that's what they did to correct it I just said we had to follow it well that's what this is they were corrected so basically they're being corrected because um, the committee um, didn't follow the ordinance basically so they're trying to correct it right well, on that's some what areas this is. on some areas that's what this is and so, you have a motion on the floor secretary treasurer uh, Councilman, at one of the all entity meetings, I made a special request that a breakout be made of all the changes of the ordinance and then be explained to us and what impact each one of these changes would have on the existing operations. That's not happened. I, my understanding was that happened at the last all entity meeting via PowerPoint from the current commissioner. We have to understand that gaming is what's carrying our nation at this time. And we have to be very serious about this. Before we jump out here and make these changes, I want to know what these changes and what these impacts would be. Now, until y'all get that done and get that accomplished, I don't think this should be approved. That, That's just my The breakout opinion. session was for the compact. This ordinance, you guys have already had it for two weeks and they've already presented it to you. You've had two weeks to ask questions and all of that. And, you know, the attorney, gaming, and gaming commission have all been working on this together. I've already read it. I don't have any issues with it. And it was already approved in all, all, all entity meetings. So, uh, and it was it already was pointed out. We've already had this discussion, and this is a proof. correction we from. We didn't even discuss it. I mean, we. I literally had all the questions. Well, you've and also had two weeks else. to read it, and then we didn't even. Um, we didn't go for a vote inside the all entities meeting, so that's why I'm saying, I make a motion that we table it for further discussion. I have a question for our legal counsel. Um, I think Ben was there at the time that um, we had this conversation. And so was there action taken that from your conversation with Ben? 
What do you mean exactly? Sorry. Approved or or vetted? Well, ben spelled this out. Yeah. On a PowerPoint presentation. Well, Jonathan spelled it out on a PowerPoint Correct. presentation. Correct. Yeah. So it, it was discussed, and we have a motion on the floor. So a few things. The ordinance amendment, you know, there's a couple different things it's trying to accomplish, just so everyone knows. One of the things it's trying to accomplish is changing the definition of key employee because there's a compensation threshold of $50,000. And everyone probably appreciates there's been a lot of inflation that's happened over the last couple of years. And so we wanted to eliminate that 50,000 barrier so we have fewer key employees because that's creating a regulatory obstacle. So that's one thing that's kind of like a housekeeping matter. The other thing that's happening in here is that the definition of eligibility for the CEO and the commissioner is being changed um, in several respects to try to clarify whether or not Jonathan himself was eligible or is eligible. We have no opinion, I personally have no opinion, I can't have an opinion of whether that's appropriate or not. That's for the CBC to decide. Everyone knows that's kind of the goal here. It's been thoroughly discussed at the prior all entity meeting. It was discussed previous to that. Um, if you vote for this, that's what it's going to accomplish is those two things. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? Okay, we have a motion on the floor. Need a motion Which you have to- have a couple motions on the floor, I think. You have one to table it and one to approve it. Okay, let's go with our first one. We have a motion to a table resolution 159-2022. I believe the first one was to approve. I made the first one to approve. Okay. Yes. Our first, first motion is to approve resolution 159-2022. Can I, can I get a motion to approve? You need a second. Oh, I'm sorry, I need a second to approve. I hear no second. All right, resolution does not pass. Okay, our next motion was to table this resolution, correct? Yes. Okay, our second resolution was to table resolution 159-202. Can I get a second? All second. We got a second by CBC member number two to table. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? No. We got five ayes and one opposed. This resolution is tabled at this time. Okay, that's the end of our resolutions. Next on the agenda is new and old business. Do we have any new or old business at this time? Okay, here's how we're gonna work our new or old business. Please state your purpose and intent, and you have five minutes. And name, please. And name. My name is Mark Wadua from Lawton, Oklahoma, and I got a complaint. You guys say you have, you're transparent when you ran for office. Well, you're not. You put your email on front of the Comanche Nation newspaper, but you don't respond to the emails, let alone phone calls. I don't go to all the powwows, so I don't get to see you there. But I sent a, a letter to you guys about getting information about taxing individual oil and gas trust land. And I wanted a clarification on that. Nobody responded to me except for Mr. Carrara, which I'm still waiting for an answer. I appreciate you answering my email, by the way. But I want you guys to be more transparent. That's all I have to say. Thank you. We did, we did discuss that at the all entities meeting and I believe Ben had some clarification for us or our attorney, mm -hmm. um, or was it actually? We, was we it? have somebody working in oil and gas now that is working on our allotments. Yeah, so there were, the questions were, um, 
within the reservation, uh, within uh, Comanche Alates, or what was the third one? Um, so just, any, to, just, to, just to stop you there for a second, the issues that were discussed with Bernard are slightly distinct from the issue that he, his complaint that he has. It's a constitutional question, by the way. Yep. So okay. the question of Bernard was this kind of the scope under general principles of Indian law. How far does the reach of the jurisdiction of the nation goes? His specific question that he raised is in the Constitution. There's references to jurisdiction. So whether the Constitution is narrower than like other tribes, like other tribes have jurisdiction to tax their allotments. That's not questioned. Under our Constitution, does the nation have jurisdiction to tax our allotments is a different question. So the first question is the one that was discussed with Bernard. His question, to my knowledge, has not yet been addressed by anybody. Okay. All right. I believe the Constitution is very narrow in its interpretation. Any and all land individually owned cannot be taxed. Now they're trying to use a gray area to go through corporations, oil and gas corporations, to tax. I think it's a very gray area, still allows a lawsuit to come forth in the future. So, But I want a clarification from the, the attorney on that, or perhaps even from the CBC. Well, at least respond to your emails. Thank you, Mr. Rodillo. Okay, next. Good morning. Um, I'm Cindy Fomero. Um, Chairman, congratulations on your leadership award. Thank you. It's very hopeful that you know we can all go move in a good direction. So I want to go back to the Quanta Parker thing. We could have done this in uh, October 1, but we didn't actually get a chance to do that, and we would not be here today. So give me a few minutes. Um, so honestly, your disregard for the truth and, and, and much less the justice in the matter, um, the events that led us to, to actually despise and hate the Texas Rangers um, is at best abhorrent, as well as your fraudulent writings on the mayor, Mayor Butler. I had a couple of conversations with her after you put the document up that said that that was her document, that she wrote those things. She sent me, she sent me the text messages that she sent you. And because she said, that's not what I said. I was, I was really shocked because she stayed the whole day with us. She danced in our circle. She took a shawl. She was gifted a shawl. She did not seem offended, no, nor did she mention nor did the judge, nor did anybody else. The only thing that was mentioned was, and it was later after the fact, right? And I understand that. I understand you have to meet people where they're at. I understand that. I want to give you the benefit of doubt for that. But it really put us in a conundrum because we've been going down there. My family's been going down there for 35, 40 years. I was raised going to Quanta, Park, uh, to Quanta Texas. My dad was super, she he was really upset at that. You didn't talk to him about it. He is your uncle. He was mad, and he actually has stage four cancer, and he will go to his grave not liking that situation. I hate that for you. I hate that for what happened. I hate that for him. He's also going to pull out of Guana, Texas because of that. Um, he's a, an old school guy. He's an old school veteran, Nama Pakutsi. He will not. He will not do those things. So I want you to know that. And did I think you, that we can real do quick, better. Did you ask the rest of the family, Ardith, Donnie? All the Parkers, or just? I, I was getting to that. Okay. Because we didn't get a chance, because okay. they didn't put their, their name on that statement, but I did see them leave. But the, the, I just want to say the statements that I got was from also our CIVA. Okay, I and understand you, that too. you have to give them an opportunity to speak also, Cindy. I got you. I okay. can understand that too. But I really want us to have good relations because there's no reason not to. I right? agree. You're, you're an up and coming uh, chairman. I think you have a lot of things going for you. I think that what we can do here is not fight amongst each other. Um, the man sitting to your left is an honored elder and I hate that we have censured him. So I want to speak about that for just a second. When we talk about censuring, um, when you're talking about day-to-day -day business at the Comanche Academy, the sponsors cannot do that. Well, the tribal administrator gave directive to Star Delgado to take me out of that position that I was in at the Comanche Academy. Now that was done surreptitiously. It was, it was not her position to do that. They have, no, uh, they have nothing above, they are not their HR department. She told the, the tribal le um, the, um, school leader that I was under investigation which I was not even an employee. 
at the time. So I was, I, so instead of uh, the CBC not working with the school, I left. So that, if you're gonna censure somebody, censure uh, what was happening and, or go back to that and, and state that as the truth because that's what happened. And I'm not gonna, you know, I don't, I don't want that to be uh, my issue. I want, it to, I want the school to do well. But two of the people that founded that, uh, the Avanci Academy, are no longer there. They can no longer do anything there. I, don't, I won't go in there without uh, someone else uh, that's also been on the design team because they need the leadership. I want you to know that um, the things that you said that the mayor did not say was that I was offended, our city council was offended, and that the Qantas citizens was offended. Well, that's not what she said. She did not say that. I have been to their, their um, homecoming game where they did the tomahawk chop, where they put their hand over their, their mouth and said, woo, woo, woo. And here I'm standing on the field and there's a whole stadium full of people doing that. That's what we're up against. And yet we apologize for a traditional song and a traditional understanding about what actually happened to us. Now we have to recognize, we have to reconcile, we have to, we have to be able to see the hard things and, and, and actually walk through them. And you as our leader, that really kind of gut punched us. It gut punched me. And I'm sorry, Mark, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that you did that and that you wrote that and that the, the mayor herself said she didn't believe that you would do that to her. You okay. actually put her job in jeopardy because they, they called from here. From that, from that meeting, they called Shane Lance. Shane Lance called her and said, what did you do? And she said, what do you mean? Well, we see these statements that we were all offended. That's what you said. She said, I didn't write that. Okay. Well, thank you. That's your five minutes. I, w I would like to know what you're going to do about it, At sir. At this meeting? This meeting is to address the business of the Comanche people. So I want to take a few minutes to respond. First and foremost, my actions toward you have never been malicious. Vice Chairman, Cindy, have never been malicious in place. That your interpretation, of, that your interpretation, and I'm sorry that's your view. Was it your intent to be malicious when you voted to censure me? We were elected to do the best for our people. When anyone's actions fall outside these rows, we address them. Vice Chairman, since your first day in office, you have done nothing but work against me. You leak partial documentation to known tribal instigators to change the narrative. You are constantly associating with those few who publicly mock the positive things that we are doing for our nation. You attacked my military career, degraded and made up lies on a daily basis, and you put undue stress on our full-time executive directors and staff. I never badmouthed you. I don't associate with people who publicly attack you because whether you like it or not, we are on the same team. Just imagine what we could accomplish if our people we we'll set our differences to the side and work together. I'm publicly asking you, will you work with me for the betterment and good of our people? I choose to be part of the solution, not the problem. As leaders, we have to set this example and be Comanche strong, stronger together. So Vice Chairman, I'm willing to work with you. The ball is in your court. All right, do we have any other new or old business? Yes. I was in Puana, Texas um, on that weekend. Um, and um, as a tribal member, whenever Dr. Pee Wee Wardy was in front of the courthouse, there was about 75 to 100 people that were there. And he started his drum and he announced himself as the vice chairman of the tribe. We were proud that he was there. He was the only CBC member that was there. Okay, so when we did start that, there was about 75 people. Then when he started singing the song, he stated the, what he was gonna sing and interpreted it. Right then, people's faces started to get around and people started to leave. As he was singing, people were offended during the song to where 
they were getting in their trucks parked on the side of the square to drown out his song, they were revving up their trucks getting ready to leave. So by the time the 75 people were there, we had maybe 30 people at the, by the time of his songs. So me personally, sir, I was offended by the song choice. And that's all from a firsthand account that I just want to state some of the stuff that Mrs. Fermero said was not true. And I just want to give my peace of mind. I'm not trying to put my job in jeopardy, but I just want to state my case. Sir, I was offended by that song that you were singing there. So that's me. All right, thank you. First of all, <clears throat> I come from a cultural point of view and I come with evidence, whatever I do. I'm a teacher. My name is Lenil P. Rewardy, by the way. A lot of our people don't understand the scalp dance, for one thing. In fact, most people, I believe, don't our Comanche people don't understand the scalp dance. Oh, I've seen the scalp dance. Oh, I know what it is. You don't come from a cultural point of view. That's a lot of our people. I see that. I'm not being negative. I'm not a negative person. I wasn't raised that way. Neither was my brother. I know, I know that because I knew his mother and dad. Those songs are not negatory in any way. Kiowa's scalp dance. I'm half Kiowa too. They're not negative in any way. They don't talk about, look at this scalp, ha, 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 ha. They're not negative toward anybody. People don't understand that. We sing those songs. I know the song he sang. Texas Rangers song about that. It's not negative. Scalp dance is not negative. It's about us. It's about us. It's not about them. We're not neglecting anybody. It's not disrespecting anybody. But it's not about them. Look, all those people with the, the trucks you said, do they understand what they, they heard? Scalp dance. So, all right, that's all they know. They don't know the chants. They don't know the words that's in there. They don't know the words that are in there. How can they be offended? They don't know what they're offended about. It's about us, you guys. You don't understand it. I'm talking from a cultural point of view. Two things are always say. In the world is small, and there's no Indians. That's very true. If you keep that in your heart, then, you, then you're more of a cultural person. I'm not telling you you're not. But people are people. Even I love my Comanche people. I mean, I've been in politics in the 70s with my dad. I know you all. I don't choose to do it now. I even try to talk Cornell in the rhetoric. I know what he's up against. He's different. He's not better. These two prestigious awards he had last month. Wow. That talks for something, I think. But these songs again, what does they offended about? When you guys took him, took, uh, censored my brother, what you did is you took it out of us, about us, and you made it about them. Mm -hmm. You made it about them. How can you do that with a Comanche? He knows that's Comancheria where he was at. If you guys know Comancheria, our history, that's, why is it called Quana? That's Comancheria land he was on. I, and he deals a lot with the land. I do it too in my classes. People don't understand the land. You made it about them. And you know what that's called? Colonialism. My brother talks about decolonizing. You did the opposite. You, CBC, did the opposite of what Cornell wants to do. But people don't understand how Cornell comes about because they only know this. They don't know this, the Comanche Academy. That's Cornell's baby. If I had that, I'd have kind of an office in there too. Not here today. But I would have it help him, because that's his baby, you guys. They need people like him. Maybe he didn't make the right, but, but, so it's somebody else who didn't do, do well, but that's not him. They still have an academy school in St. Paul, Minnesota, still going on for 20 years. He was there, he started that. And he was there, for, he was principal for three years to establish the foundation. It's still going on. I'm concerned about a Comanche Academy. As an educator, I'm an educator also. All education, educator doesn't mean just teaching class. It's more than that. I, I wish I had the time to tell you that. Cornell knows that. I know that. We're not better than anybody else. We're Comanche. We were born and raised here. You guys know us. We have a lot of history, but there's so many things our Comanche people don't understand, even our CBC, from a cultural point of view. Be one of us, and you'll understand that. Make a decision. Make sure you hear both sides. There's so much that's missing for this. That last October meeting, I don't understand why it got started. We were in the parade, me and Cornell. 
conveniently, you just I started that meeting without Cornell. I took Cornell when that parade was over because I got it right here. Like I said, dealing evidence. You guys know what the, the, the uh, Facebook said. There it is. A short recess will be taken during the, during, during the parade and the meeting will convene after when it is over. Evidence. We were in the parade. We were about 75% percentile of it. And when I looked at, when I was in front with uh, Carly, I mean, uh, Carla Whiteman, was doing the independence, I looked, it was about 1120. It was about, about 10, 15 more minutes more. So the parade must have been done around 1140, best guess. So the meeting at least should have started 1145, 1150. Cornell went over there, it was already over. Well, the heart of a open meeting is the notice. You guys, politely, I'm saying, you didn't tell us the truth. I don't know what happened in that. Maybe there's emergency. I don't know. I don't know. But that meeting, when I told Cornell when it was over. We were, we were both in the parade singing. I said, when it's over, I said, Cornell, you better go over that meeting. Parade's going to be over in about 15 minutes. So I saw him walk off. He went over there, and he said, the meeting's over. I don't know what happened. Okay. Maybe the chance to respond for that, why it happened, whatever. But those are just the facts. Not even the facts, and evidence. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. If there are no further old or new business, can I get a motion to go into executive I, session? I, I've oh. got new business. Ah, well, that way, guy. The nanny that's uh, wrong on Red Elk. I was looking in the uh, monthly report for the uh, Comanche uh, language department and amazed at the number of uh, usage and also the beginning of the Dictionary Act. Um, Comanche language is a must for us to have Comanche culture. Remember that. Comanche language is a must for us to have a true Comanche culture. Now, tribal member on Indian country today had an interview, and this tribal member was a creative producer of prey. This is an excerpt from <coughs> that interview. I flew back to Oklahoma, met our Comanche Nation Language Department Director, Catherine Briner, called in my auntie favors and got our best linguist, Guy Narcomi, who wrote the Comanche Dictionary. If you have a, a Comanche dictionary, on the very first page, there is a list of approximately 35, 40 first language speakers, our last speakers, that developed that dictionary. They were the brain trust of every word in there. And on that list, there are names. And there's names of other people that helped from various uh, activities. Nowhere in there is there a guy in Narcomy. I was offended, not personally, but for those speakers that have gone, that have worked so hard on this document. And it's essential in the establishment of our language being revived. And I would like to uh, ask you CBC members to write and call Indian Country today and, and speak out against what was this command. Jane Myers is a, is a Comanche tribal member and how she could say that. And I don't know what her definition of a linguist is, but I know Guy Narcomi does not have that type of background. Now, I know he has a good background in language, but that was an insult to our language department. Thank you, Mr. Riddell. Yes, Vice Chairman. Yes, I have uh, to 
just looking at that one meeting that um, you said five minutes, but um, you, you allowed five people unlimited time to speak to the last time we had a new business. But last month in October, I have a copy of a drafted uh, letter by the Comanche Kiowa and Apache of Oklahoma that endorses the candidacy of uh, Superintendent Joy Hoffmeister for the Office of Government for the State of Oklahoma. And I applaud that uh, letter of endorsement. Uh, uh, where's Jennifer? Jennifer, could you help me out here? Or, or Jared, could you help me uh, distrib distribute this? Uh, in the spirit of uh, the KCA, the Comanche Kyle and Apache Solidarity, I present to the CPC a resolution to endorse uh, Joy Hoffmeister for governor of Oklahoma. I'd like to read that uh, resolution. Um, you give me a copy. <laughs> and what I've done is uh, attached a copy of the, uh, the letter that uh, came from the KCA, uh, uh, the, the, those that are the, uh, the leaders, the chairman of the Comanche Nation, chairman of the Kiowa Tribe, chairman of the Apache. That's on the back of this. Whereas the Comanche Nation is a federally recognized Indian tribe, the Constitution approved by the Secretary of the Interior January 9, 1967, safeguard the tribal rights, power, and privilege to improve the economic, moral, educational, and health status of its members. And whereas the Comanche Business Committee has inherent authority to make official announcements of its position with respect to matters of public interest, and whereas Joy Hoffmeister has shown interest, unique interest in establishing a communications link with the Comanche Nation leadership that will inform her development of policy that have best serves our community and citizens. And whereas Joy Hoffmeister has actively opened direct communication with tribal leadership throughout in, uh, Oklahoma and all 39 recognized uh, tribes to assure us that we will respect our that she will respect our sovereign rights and will engage with us on a regular basis when she is elected. Whereas Superintendent Hoffmeister is uniquely qualified to serve as a state governor, having led the Oklahoma State Department of Education these past few years with integrity and vision. She has demonstrated understanding of the sovereignty status of our tribes and then out guide her administration with effectiveness and honor the presence of our, our tribal nation throughout Oklahoma. So now, therefore, be it resolved that the Comanche Business Committee hereby endorse Joy Hoffmeister's candidacy for the Office of Governor for the State of Oklahoma and look forward to the bright future under her leadership. So I'm just following that lead um, from that letter, and I and make the motion for the CBC to endorse Joy Hoffmeister like for the Governor of the motion. State of Oklahoma. Okay, we got a first and we got a second. Chairman, yes. do you all have a number for that resolution? Uh, the last one is resolution 159. So, so it'll be like 160, 160 for the record, 2022? Yes. yes. So would it be resolution 160-2022? Okay, we got a motion on the floor. We got a first and a second to pass resolution to endorse I just want to make a comment, Chairman. I think that uh, we have to be very careful as a nation. Now, I don't know whether our people are keeping up with state politics or not, but the bottom line on it is that the present governor, because he has disagreements with the eastern tribes, he has cut back on their gaming operations. Now he has left the, he has left the Comanche Nation alone because we have not been involved in politics. We've been involved in business, and that's running, running our gaming operation. Now. I want us to be very serious before we take any action on this, because I want to know. I want you to know, and I want ever. I want all our Comanche people out there to know that if we take this position to support one side or the other, 
What if they lose? Then we've made an enemy. We've made an enemy with the existing governor. I'm not saying I support the existing governor. I'm just saying we better think about this. It's pretty serious business. Gaming is what's keeping all of us going. We cannot have it interrupted. We cannot have it uh, cut back. It'll, it'll reduce our per cap payments to our people. We have to be careful here. Now, this was not brought before the business committee till right now. It should, be, it should have been discussed before it was brought before this for a vote. Now, I don't know why it was done this way. But it was okay for the um, CN Entertainment to purchase a table with the Lawton Chamber of Commerce that had Governor Stent there, right? The endorsement. That's almost like an endorsement, right? I would say so. It's an endorsement. If I may say that um, I requested a special work session on Monday, and um, I didn't hear from anybody feedback except Hazel. That's why I wanted to present it to the CBC, but it didn't happen. So I'm following suit from the letter that is attached to this, where all three chairmen have endorsed uh, uh, Joy Hoffmeister. That I'm just following in the spirit of that solidarity. I think Thank it's you. More than that, yeah. but rights and that's more important to me because we do need to get away from gaming to be sustainable in the future so I'm down with Joe Wood Joy. I'm, I'm, I'm going to second what our secretary treasurer said we need to stay out of politics this is not the venue to do it if you want to personally support them go ahead but not as a CBC I don't think we should take a position on anybody else but what our people are doing. So. so what was the purpose, excuse me, Ross, what was the purpose of uh, Cole being here? And it was on Facebook, live. He wanted to visit our nation. He's never visited our nation, so I gave him an opportunity to visit. Nothing political was spoken. We talked okay. leadership and we talked goals. Okay. Nothing political was talked, no endorsement. Well, if was we received. were informed about it, maybe I wouldn't be asking this question. But. Well, when you don't respond to emails or text messages. Excuse yes. me. Okay. It's CBC. It's already been voted on, so I've already seconded it. We didn't take the vote. We just Call have a motion in a second. Call for a vote. Okay. We'll call for a vote for resolution. 1602 dash, I'm sorry, dash 2022. Let's go to a voice vote. Secretary Treasurer, please. I vote no. Secretary Treasurer, will you please do a roll call vote? Huh? Roll call vote. Oh, roll call vote. You, you, you. All right. All right. Dr. Cornell P. Wee Wardy, Vice Chairman. Yes. Affirmative. John David Wani, Secretary Treasurer, no. Hazel Tasqua, committee woman number one. Yes. Ross Carrara, committee number two. No. Alice Casnavoid, committee woman number three. Yes. Robert Comachi, Jr., committeeman number four. I want to stay. Okay, we have three yeses, two noes, and one abstain. So resolution passes. Okay, can I get, if there's no more new or old business, can I get a motion to go into executive session? I make a motion to go into executive session. Can I get a second? She has a question. Someone. Lisa. Hello again, and I'm at Lisa. Um, I am a volunteer at the Comanche Academy, and there was an article that was uh, depicted of our Egapukana as a soccer team that is supported by the Comanche Academy. And I just want to let you know, to know that these kids are very important to our community. And I 
really appreciate your favor for them. There are four teams, there are 29 kids, and yes, some of the students are from Comanche Academy, but it is completely voluntary. The funds are philanthropy based. So, Eka Pukana, Pui Pukana, Ebi Pukana, and Oha Pukana, we have games on Saturday, and we really appreciate the CBC's support in um, assisting with the kids, and thank you all so much. Ara. Thank you. Can I get a second to go into executive session? Actually, I, I have some new business. Um, talking about transparency, um, I think we need to let our people know what's going on in our nation and even within the CBC. Uh, <coughs> there's, there's no real reports to our people what's going on with our boards. And I make a motion that uh, each board, whether it's a designee or the chair of that board, provide a report just like our chairman, secretary treasurer, and vice treasurer do each month. Um, Mr. Chairman, who are the board members on um, Indian Health Services? I am. I'm the only one. Okay. It's one representative per tribe. Okay. Um, Mr. Chairman, Who's, who's on the housing board? Vice Chairman and CBC member four and three. Okay. And who's all on the KCA board? Myself, CBC number four and three. Okay. And who's on the Comanche Nation Enterprise board? CBC member number four and number three. And who's on the cow calf board, Mr. Chairman? I'm the only one. Robert Comanche Jr. Okay. And then I believe we're all on Comanche Nation Entertainment Commission, Liquor Board. No, we're not tax on. Commission. Those aren't boards. Enterprises. I mean, Entertainment and Gaming Commission. They're not boards. Mm -hmm. They're entities. Entities, sorry. Entities. Whether it's an entity or board, we need to be reporting to the people. Okay. So my motion is to have a designee for each board or entity provide a report each month on the happenings of each of those. Okay. That's my motion. Okay, we got a motion on the floor. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, sorry. This is just me talking here now as a tribal member that happens to be at this meeting and not as anyone's attorney. But the genesis of the reports that are given by the executive officers was in a tribal council resolution that I submitted that was not permitted to go before the tribal council at the April meeting. Fortunately, you know, the CBC adopted that resolution through its own um, as a motion or that part of my resolution through its own motion. But the intent behind the reports of the executive officers was in part to provide the information from the boards. Since they are going to the all entity meeting, every CBC member is at the all entity meeting, and at the all entity meeting is where they are gathering information from the tax commission, from the gaming commission, from Comanche Nation Entertainment. And the idea behind the reports was so that they could then gather that information and give their reports, um, and then you only have three versus if you have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I mean, we're going to be here all day if you have so many reports. So the idea is, okay, the chairman's at the all entity meeting. He knows what's going on with the tax commission. No one out here does. So when the meeting comes, instead of just saying, I did what the constitution requires me to do and then sit down, he can say, I met with the tax commission and the tax commission reported that there was, they're above budget or they're below budget. And the secretary treasurer can say, I met with Comanche Nation Entertainment and they're above budget by a million dollars. We're gonna get a higher per cap instead of having everyone just waiting around all year. What's the per cap gonna be? Are we above budget, are we below budget? What's going on? No one knows anything. And so that was the intent that I had when I submitted that resolution to the tribal council was that the officers, as officers of the tribal council, would be reporting to the tribal council what they've been learning the previous month by meeting with all these different entities. Um, so. That's my two cents. Thank you for listening. Okay, we've got two motions on the floor. Yeah, thanks. 
Leslie, what was the first motion? I don't know. I need to go back and look. I lost track. <laughs> well, we have Ross's motion, but yeah. we don't have a second. Um, I'll second. Okay, we got a second. Ross, state your motion, please. Yeah, Provide. I have a designee for um, the entities or boards uh, that aren't reported on currently, like he said. Okay. Um, Okay. Excluding any proprietary information or personal or financially identifiable information. Okay. I think, uh, Chairman, I think, uh, I think Brother out here had, had the right comment when he said transparency. Uh, what our people don't realize is that we do have different representatives for different functions, all represents the CBC. And because that's the way we're structured, uh, I, I fully support that. I think that uh, I think that we should start having a, a report on the Indian Health uh, Board re report, Enterprise Monthly report, Tax Commission report, Comanche Nation Entertainment report, the Cal Calf Operations. That way, we have transparency on all functions of how we generate revenues or how we're expending revenues. No hidden agendas. We get those monthly reports out, covered with our Comanche people, then y'all can voice your opinions, your comments, your concerns. I strongly support the transparency concept, brother. Thank you. I have one comment. You know, in the 1970s, I was around <coughs> the CDC back then, and I've, I've also been on the CDC. So I know there were reports from different uh, business groups, getting commissions, and enterprises. So it worked at one time. It did take a little longer business meetings, but you have to have that. Okay, we got a first and we got a second. Who wants the second? Vice Chairman. Thank you. All in favor of the report signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, motion passes. We got a motion Chairman. to go into executive Chairman. session. Chairman, I have a question. Yes. Are we going to allow a report by uh, our legal counsel? Or? Yes, after executive session, we'll okay. hear legal okay. counsel. Thank you. Okay, do I need a second to go into executive session, please? I have one, one, one more motion to make, and that is to rescind the resolution re uh, censoring um, censure of Cornell P. Wardy. Okay, was that discussed with the CBC? No. But, CBC, you know, in September, when, when all this came about, you know, we all know that when those individuals got up, uh, and spoke regarding the academy, that that issue had been taken care of back in December. And Mr. P. Wardy had not been at the academy since then. But I believe our people on live stream as well as in the audience believe that it was an ongoing issue. It was not. So that played a part in some of the decisions that was made that day. It made it look as if he was still okay. being a, causing a problem, but he was not. But I also, the re, another reason why I say this is because we didn't realize, I didn't realize it at the time. I was trying to be, you know, pay attention to what each person said. But there was almost like a um, plan. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't. But it just appeared that way afterwards. And um, I just think that it was taken all out of context as far as from the mayor. Um, I just think that it wasn't reported accordingly. Okay. Yeah, and Ross said that with the information he presented that he voted the way he did. Now that you know, Ross, that I have actually came to you and said, hey, this is true, this is what I found out. You and I have, I've never been in any kind of forum with each other, you know what I mean? We don't talk like that, but I trust that you know the information today and that you'll vote differently. I didn't vote based off of what happened in Kwana. No, you voted what you I've, heard that day. That's what you said. Yeah, I voted on the information that was given, that was presented by those from the school. That's how I made my decision, because they lumped them all together. Yeah, okay. it was lumped all together like it was And I'll all still vote the same based off of their oh, testimony. Secretary Regard, regardless, I'm not even talking about Quana or anything like that. 
but because they're all together, that's the way it looks. Mr. Chairman. Yes. You know, I've sat in here and I've heard comments made from sister, from other CBC members, but councilmen, when, when, when charges are made or against someone, they have a right to respond to those. Is that correct? That's absolutely right, yeah. So I think it's time we resolve this once and for all. Dr. Pee Wee Wardy, I would like for you to take the document that was presented against you, and I want you to speak for yourself, not anybody else to speak for you. And I want you to show proof of what you're saying is true. Then we can take a look at this thing very seriously. And I will give it my full attention. Thank you. Secretary Treasurer, I appreciate the opportunity to have voice because I have not been given that voice at all. And that's called due process. And I think people that, particularly those that are youth, should understand that as we begin to try to make uh, accusations. And I, I really do, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And so I have to backtrack, I was not prepared. I'm, I'm kind of surprised actually that I have an opportunity because I was denied that. So I, I appreciate it, thank you. So I'm kind of I'm kind of perplexed, but I'm, I'm happy that I'm able to do that. But when I say that when the CBC makes a call, a mandatory, mandatory school board meeting, to me, that is a violation of Oklahoma, um, uh, what is it, the Oklahoma, um, well, charter school law. And it was happened right here. But, um, you know, that, that was my inquiry. And, and, and to, to have that conversation I don't think that the CBC can call a school board meeting. And that was called because I got the, uh, the email from uh, Jennifer. She said, mandatory school board meeting. I said, no, we're not on a school board. We are the CBC, we are the sponsors. But it was allowed to be hosted right here and to have the conversation. And out of that conversation was an action item what was a letter that was sent, a punitive letter that was sent to me, um, certified mail. And I called a number of CBC members to say, you know, what, oh, we decided to vote and um, this is what occurred. I said, well, um, I think that um, the, um, the opportunity to have that voice should be really the school board uh, make that. So that's how the conundrum came to me. But I think that because of my interactions early on with, uh, the, at that time, the school leader to give advice. But being that I was there for um, the school leader today, her name is Dar De Deva, and we're still colleagues, but I haven't, haven't had my physical presence at the academy other than one um, um, parent meeting. Uh, and because of that, I feel very distanced because what uh, Daniel said, being the architect of the school, has a lot of meaning for me. And it's a lot of healing for me, and I appreciate that. And so the opportunity to, to voice myself, to say, you know, I appreciate the advocacy, because I think that those are the things that we're trying to explain to our children. How do we solve problems? To me, I solve problems by looking at restorative, restorative justice, an idea that I presented to the school leaders that um, we need to really indigenize our way of doing things. And they're doing it through restorative justice, talking through, having a talking circle, not going through the, you know, the, the mainstream ways of, of running schools. That's not by design. I've never gone through any kind of school leadership position using mainstream instruments. That's why we have to decolonize and indigenize even the governance. Even here, I have a difficult time with Robert's rules of orders, but that's in our constitution. So given that voice, I appreciate that. I've done things that um, they're honestly 
um, up front. And, you know, there's been, you know, ideology conflict in that, and I realize that, but I do want you to know, I appreciate, you know, um, those that are advocacies, those that are parents that have come to me and expressed themselves, a number of them, and they said, you know, will, you're, will you have your day in court? Will you have the, your opportunity to give voice? I said, well, I try. But now, I appreciate it, uh, John David Wani. He's a former principal, too. So we know about due process. And so that's what I convey. I said, this is an opportunity to really clean the house, and I'm, I'm ready to move on. I'm ready to move, say, hey, hey, sometimes we make mistakes. We learn from our mistakes, and we go on. I'm an advocate for the school. I always will from the get-go. So that's what I wanted to say. Just thank you so much, and uh, you're, it's, at your, it's in your hands. Thank you, Vice Chairman. Okay, Leslie, what was our two... What was our two motions on the floor? Ms. Tassaqua made a resolution or made a motion to rescind the censorship, censorship resolution, and then still on the floor is our motion to go into executive session. Okay. But first was the censoring resolution. Okay, CBC, did you have a, did you have an opportunity to discuss this? You good? All right, let's take it to a vote. We got a motion on the floor to rescind the censoring of the vice chairman. Second. Motion was made by CBC member number one, <coughs> seconded by our vice chairman. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Okay. Let's do a roll call vote. I vote for the motion to rescind. Hazel Tassaqual? Yes. Ross Carrara? No. Alice Castleboyd? Yes. Robert Comerci? No. John Wani? Yes. Okay. Motion passes four to two. All right, we got a motion on the floor to go into executive session. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor of going into executive session, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, we are now in executive session. <laughs>